Hello, I'm Coach Christian, and I help extremely stressed people to deal with their stress by observing it for themselves. Welcome to yet another video. Every single day I publish a video that's designed to provide you with tools that you can use to deal with any stressful situation in your life. So let's move into the, the question of the day. Um, the question is as follows. Coach Christian, how do I handle disrespect? Coach Christian, how do I handle disrespect? So yeah, so this this happens often, isn't it? Um, maybe not often, but it's going to. So I mean, let's just get clear on disrespect first. What is that? What is disrespect? So, I mean, a while back I did a video on respect, and I'd mentioned that uh, we we thought about the idea that to respect someone is to hold them as admirable in some way, you know, to hold them in some sort of esteem, you know to view the person as significant in some sense and this is what uh, this is uh, this is what naturally makes us respect them right so for example i mean if if someone is let's say firm they have principles and they stick to them right if i admire that trait i i respect such a person you know if let's say someone is very excellent at what they do they are a great athlete then I also have respect for them because of what they do. Or someone has a lot of money, and I admire the fact that they have a lot of money. I respect them for it, right? So this is respect. Now, obviously, the flip side of that is disrespect, isn't it? So to be disrespected is to be held in low esteem, to be looked down upon in some way, right? It's This, this is the feeling, isn't it? So, for example... If let's say someone uh, just, I mean, you say hi to somebody, good morning, or something, and the person doesn't reply, right? That's disrespect, isn't it? Because the person is treating you as if you're not important, you don't matter. So you could feel disrespected, right? And uh, that would be the feeling of disrespect. Um, and there, there's, there's many other things. I mean, I, I can't, I, from what I can see, disrespect always occurs whenever somebody's actions some people's actions give you the impression make you feel like they think you are less they don't hold you in esteem right so naturally this is painful yes um and the reason it's painful is because you want to be held in high esteem isn't it who doesn't want to be viewed as significant in the eyes of others right so pretty much everybody does and so you want to be important you want to be significant in society you want to be significant in the eyes of others and then someone says something or acts in a way that doesn't make you feel significant right this is painful right it's because you feel like you've been diminished You've been lowered. You've been destroyed in some way. Right? This this is part of what creates this feeling of this this feeling of disrespect, isn't it? Um, so I mean, if someone disrespects you, uh, I mean, there's many ways you can respond, isn't it? One way is you could feel very angry, right? Obviously, right? But this anger is really fear, isn't it? Fear that it's kind of it's like it's a sort of fear of death you're afraid of being destroyed you it's like you, 
it's it's very bizarre stuff. See, I have an image of myself. The image of myself is that I am a respectable person. People should treat me with respect. People should. I am significant. This is one of the beliefs I have. I am significant. But of course, on the flip side of that belief is the fear that I might not be significant, right? I'm not. That's why I'm always trying to prove my significance, isn't it? Why would someone? Uh, why would someone work so hard in, in a career? Like they want to become significant, important, feel like they matter. Why would you go through so much effort, right? And people go about it in so many ways, right, to make themselves significant. You can make yourself significant by what? Um, progressing in your career, right? Uh, becoming very powerful, uh, let's say career-wise, right? Becoming better than others at some activity. That's how you kind of make yourself significant, isn't it? You can make yourself significant by having more money than other people. More significant by being more talented. More significant by being more intelligent. You have to be more in some way. This is how you make yourself significant. But why would anyone go through the effort of making themselves significant if they already feel significant, right? That doesn't make any sense. The reason you're pursuing significance is because you don't feel significant. And it's painful to not feel significant, to feel like you don't matter. That's painful, right? And when someone disrespects you, it's like, they're kind of like they're rubbing salt in a wound, you know. I already don't feel significant and you're rubbing it in, man. You're rubbing it in. You're making me feel even smaller than I am. This is so painful, right? And it's like now you're going to react in a certain way, isn't it? You could react angrily, right? You could react in anger. That's one way, you know. It's like you're the one who's making me feel small. God damn it, you know, I'm so mad at you. Right. That's one way you could react in anger. Another way is you could react with sadness, isn't it? Like just become very low. Oh my God, man. Nobody respects me. I'm really a nobody. There's many reactions you can go in. And the reactions can just flip. You can easily go from feeling very low. Oh man, I, I don't matter. Nobody cares about me. And almost instantly you can switch from feeling low to becoming hyper, just angry, you know? So those those things are related but all of it is is connected to the fear of not being significant the fear of not mattering right this is part of this is part of what is causing this this this, this is part of why the disrespect is so painful right it's it's feeding the fear that you might not matter after all that you're a nobody that nobody cares about you that nobody thinks you're important right that that feeling of um being insignificant right that's that's what disrespect feeds that that fear or that feeling yes um of course if you go a little deeper you'll realize that i mean the mind the mind imagines you you imagine that if if people make you feel insignificant, you can't live with that feeling. You can't live with the feeling of being insignificant, right? Like if kind of like if they disrespect you, this is the end of the world, man. I'm I'm not gonna be able to handle this. Is so terrible. This is the worst thing that could ever happen. But of course, the reality is, even when people disrespect you, you can still live with the disrespect. What I'm saying is that. You have this image of yourself as being significant. I am significant, right? And you have this fear that you're not significant, right? This fear that you are nobody, right? Now, you're, in order to avoid this fear that you are nobody, you try to reinforce again and again the idea that you're significant through your achievement, through your actions. You're doing everything you can to be significant, to matter. You're afraid that you don't matter, yes? And... Instead of facing this fear of not mattering, of not being significant, you're escaping from it by trying to make yourself significant, isn't it? You somehow feel that you, ca you cannot handle this fear, when in reality you can. Right? If you just sit down with this fear of not being significant, 
nobody's gonna respect me nobody's ever gonna do what i want everybody's gonna look down upon me if you stay with this fear all these thoughts of oh i'm a nobody i don't matter my life is meaningless if you sit with these kinds of thoughts like you can handle the fear right it's not it's not you can sit with those those feelings are not going to kill you. You can sit with them. That's the first thing, isn't it? This is the first thing to realize. Any form of disrespect. I'm not saying you shouldn't take external steps, right? So, for example, if someone punches you in the face, right? I'm not saying that you should do nothing, right? Uh, not necessarily that you should do nothing and just uh, sit with the disrespect, right? What I'm just saying is that even the worst case scenario, you can deal with it. This is a great source of strength, isn't it? That even if people disrespect you and you do absolutely nothing to make them respect you, even if people look down upon you and you do nothing in order to make them look up to you or think of you as important, even if you do nothing at all, you'll still be fine. That's the beginning, right? It's not the end of the world. We start there. Whatever the feeling of disrespect is, you can handle it. It's not going to eat you, and it's not going to last forever. This is the beginning. And then maybe you need to take action on the external level, right? So if someone punches you in the, in the face, right? Now, depending on the situation, it could be that if you don't retaliate, that's going to encourage them to punch you again, and it's going to encourage other people to punch you again. Isn't it? So in, in, in which case, you have to take some sort of action. Some sort of retaliation is needed just to protect yourself, isn't it? I mean, it's like something I learned from... Um, so in this case, you have to... So you see, that's why I never recommend a particular way of acting. Like, uh, I'm not the kind of guy who's going to tell you to be nice and kind and gentle. Right. I, I think there are times when it's, when it's a good idea to be nice. There are times when it's okay to be gentle. And there are times when you need to be violent. Right? Right. avoiding conflict is not honorable it's not like something to be to admire to be admired the person who is avoiding conflict right and usually if people figure out that you're avoiding conflict or that you're afraid of them right then they're going to take that chance to take uh, they're going to use that chance to take advantage of you if someone feels that they can disrespect you and not face any consequence of course they're going to disrespect you again so in some cases, it might be a good idea to retaliate. Just to make it clear that uh, if someone is going to disrespect you, if someone is going to treat you like crap, there's going to be consequences. Right? It might be necessary to protect yourself in that way. Right? But notice it on two levels. There's external actions. Notice that whatever you do, right? Like, for instance, if someone, if someone punches you in the face and you retaliate by punching them and fighting and you get into a huge fight, at the end of that fight, that person is going to know that, okay, this guy is not a pushover. Right? If, if I disrespect him in any way or I cross certain lines, there's going to be consequences. Right? That's going to act as a deterrent for him. They're going to be uh, very careful about uh, crossing certain lines with you. And other people who are watching are also going to look at that and be like, hey, don't mess with Christian. You know, there's going to be consequences. So that's you, that, that may be useful for you on an external level. To protect yourself from people taking advantage of you, right? There's no, like, there is absolutely no beauty. Uh, there, weakness is not a virtue. Right? Weakness is not a virtue. Like, actually, you know, I mean, uh, one of the things I like doing is watching Nigerian movies. I mean, they're very fun movies, right? But uh, typically, there's a theme I've seen in a lot of Nigerian movies where it's kind of like sometimes the movies glorify weakness, you know? It's like someone is just... Someone is insulted, they're treated like crap, they're not being fed, they're being beaten, uh, they're being treated like an outcast. Things are being done to them and what they do is just cry and cry and cry. And then eventually that somehow the Lord is going to come and fix things for them. Right? I'm, I'm not for that school of thought. Because the reality with human beings is that if you show weakness, they're going to attack there's few people who are not going most people is if uh, they have a way of explore if they can if they know that they can do harm to you without any consequence you bet they're going to do harm to you okay 
So this is this is this is this is the nature of people. I, I haven't met people who are not. I mean, there's few people who are like that. Like at a vulnerable moment, if they know that they can like just take take from you, right? Or like, I mean, if someone knows that they can like, let's say, uh, what? Take your money, right? For example, if someone knows that they can take your money and you won't do anything about it, right? And they need the money, right? You bet that you're going to have people who are going to take the money. Right? Most people will, in fact, take the money, right? Because this this is kind of our nature. Is when someone is weak, we like to exploit those who are weaker than us, right? I mean, we have like corporal punishment uh, in many parts of Africa where a kid is. Uh, like uh, where where a kid is beaten, right? At least in the parts of Africa that I've been in, so like parents beat their kids in order to discipline them. They say the reason you're beating your kid is because the kid is weaker than you, right? If you were as big as you are, you wouldn't be beating him, right? The reason people don't come and punch me in the face is because they know they're not going to get away with it, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's going to be some retaliation. There'll be some pain associated with it, right? So this is the this is the nature of uh, people. So in some cases, I'm not saying retaliate. I'm saying look at the situation, observe the situation. Maybe the situation requires retaliation. If it does, then it's in your best interest to retaliate. But notice that no amount of retaliation is going to eradicate this fear that you're insignificant, this feeling that you don't matter, this fear that other people don't respect you. That fear is there, and you're not going to eradicate it. You're not going to make... You're not going to become significant, right? I mean, when you beat someone up, right? When you beat someone up or attack someone, in that moment, you feel a certain sense of significance. You're important. You've attacked them and they're in pain, okay? But that doesn't eradicate the fear of being insignificant, the fear of not mattering, right? So there's actions you can take on the outside to protect yourself physically in the environment, or politically, whatever, but notice that there's a real issue here, there's a real fear here of not mattering, of being insignificant, and that has to be addressed separately. And so how do you address this inner feeling of being insignificant, of not mattering, of not being loved by people, of being disapproved of, all these fears? How do you, uh, how do you tackle that? Here the key is you just observe it, right? This, this is the best I can do, is when you feel those fears, I don't recommend running away from them because running away from them isn't going to make them go away. It's going to make them grow even more. So when you experience these fears, pay attention to them. Don't fight them. Pay attention to them. Observe them. Right? And when you observe them, they're not going to grow as much as if you had, had suppressed them. Right? So look, if you <laughs> this has been a long video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. And hit the bell notification. Ding, 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 ding. This will notify you whenever I publish a new video. Every single day I publish a video that's designed to provide you with tools that you can use to deal with any stressful situation uh, in your life. Um, and in particular, look, if you have a question or a comment that you'd like me to address, please add it in the comment section below. Um, I mean, I may actually answer your question in a forthcoming video. I'll definitely reply to it if you put it in the in the question, in the comment section. Um, I mean, for, 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 for a period of time, I'd be able to reply to it. Um, and if you have any comments, I want to hear the comments because I want to know what you think. I want to know what your problems are. This will make sure that the videos that I make meet your needs. Now, if this idea of observation fascinates you, right? Observing this fear that uh, disrespect triggers. If you want to... If you want to know how to observe such emotions, such feelings, right, and, 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 and make sure that they don't dominate you and you're not suppressing them and you're finding a way to work with this fear, deal with it, right? If you want to know how to do that, then I have a tool for you. Just go to the description of this video and click on something called the Observe Approach. There's a link called the Observe Approach. This will give you free and instant access, right? It's under the label the Observe Approach. This will give you free and instant access to a simple but very powerful method that you can apply right now right, to deal with any problem that's stressing you out by observing it for yourself, including this feeling of disrespect, etc. Okay? 
So this is one. Um, I've made, there's another video I made that's related to this topic, right? This one is, uh, it's called How to Be Respected by Others. So if you enjoyed this video about dealing with disrespect, likely you'll enjoy that one also. So I'm going to add it in the, in the description of this video. Otherwise, look, thank you very much for watching this video and hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.